Hello and welcome to Star Diary, the podcast from the makers of BBC Sky at Night magazine. You can subscribe to the digital edition of the magazine by visiting iTunes, Google Play or Apple News, or to the print edition by visiting skyatnightmagazine.com. Greetings listeners, and welcome to Star Diary, a weekly guide to the best things to see in the Northern Hemisphere's night sky. As we are based here in the UK, all times are in GMT. In this episode, we'll be covering the coming week from the 10th to the 16th of March. I'm Features Editor Ezzie Pearson, and I'm joined this week by astronomy writer Katrin Rayner. Hello, Katrin. Hi, Ezzie. How are you doing? I'm good. Now, I understand that this week might be quite an exciting one. So what do we have to look forward to this week? Yes, it's a biggie. So we have a full moon this week. And not only that, drum roll, mm-hmm. there is also a total lunar eclipse Ooh, (laughs) always good to see the blood moon, as it will undoubtedly be called. But I'm just let you down gently here, Azzy, because we're not going to see it from the UK. Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah, it's only going to be a total eclipse for those in the Americas, Antarctica and Alaska, just to name a few. The totality is going to be seen by a lot of people across the world. Unfortunately, those people are not us here in the UK. But that doesn't mean we can't see anything, as I'm sure Katrin is about to tell us. Well, it's not even that great, but give it a go if you do want to try and see it. So we will see a partial phase with eclipse, obviously not totality, but more of that later. Also this week, you know, we've got Venus now appearing as a very thin crescent and Mercury is still visible and there is a lovely asteroid to spot as well. So let's just get into it then. Well, the moon. So yes, the 13th and 14th, we do have a full moon and a total lunar eclipse. So as we said at the beginning, you know, from the UK, we're only going to catch a glimpse of the eclipse because the moon will be setting here before totality starts or is going through the the totality phase. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's a real shame because, you know, obviously last year America had the total solar eclipse and now they've got a total lunar eclipse and we get nothing. I know. (laughs) However, there are a couple of really good solar eclipses coming up in the next couple of years that are going to be going through Spain. So it's going to be Europe's turn before long. Yeah, I am thinking, you know, about heading to Spain. Is it 2027? Or was there one next year as well? It's 2026 and 2027. And then there is an annular eclipse in 2028. So it's like three in a row. Oh, fab. So you'll be just rent a house in Spain for three years. Exactly. Lovely. Uh, But we are getting ahead of ourselves. So what's going on with this this lunar eclipse? So yeah, so let's get started first with the name of the full moon, which in March is known as the worm moon. And this is so cool because as the warmer weather approaches, earthworms start to appear, they get to work. And it's also a time when nature starts to get back to life after a long, cold and dark winter. Yeah, so, you know, the worm moon marks the end of winter, And I did also read that the worm moon may not refer to earthworms at all, but beetle larvae as they re-emerge from the thawing bark of trees. Oh, yeah, I can imagine that there's a lot of wormy things coming out of all sorts of places at this time of year. That's it, yeah. So it's always interesting reading up on the full moon names and where they've come from. And we have other names as well called the eagle moon or the goose moon. The sugar moon I quite liked, so that's because the sap of maple trees start to flow. Oh. Uh-huh. And the wind strong moon. So I thought that was another lovely one. I Yeah, I think it's the sugar moon's probably a bit nicer than the worm moon, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that one is probably localised to areas where maple trees are. Yes. Canada, perhaps? Yes, probably. So yeah, lots of lovely names there. And yeah, so just back to the lunar eclipse, so... For those listening in the areas where it will be visible, there's going to be around six hours of viewing if you want to take in the whole eclipse from beginning to end. And yeah, just briefly, as you know, a lunar eclipse happens when the Earth is between the sun and a full moon and the Earth casts a shadow onto the moon. Mm-hmm. And a lunar eclipse is a bit more complicated than uh, a solar eclipse because Earth has an atmosphere. So a solar eclipse is when the moon moves in front of the sun. It doesn't have an atmosphere, so it's just a a straight hard shadow. But because Earth has its atmosphere, it 
bends and refracts some of the light away, which means that there's some areas where there's a bit of light eking through through Earth's shadow. And when the moon enters into the central part of Earth's shadow, what's called the umbra, that has a slight reddish glow to it because the red light's been scattered by our atmosphere and it's been scattered into its shadow. So there is actually a bit of light there, which is why you can see the moon and why it becomes this lovely blood red colour. This sort of, they call it blood red. To me, it's more sort of a rusty red, which I think is, a, is you know, a bit more of a poetic, but that's just me. Yeah, and, and you know, I've brought it up before during Star Diary. I've only ever seen one lunar eclipse. 2015, oh my gosh, that was like 10 years ago. Mm. Yeah, and it, it was fascinating. It was just amazing. I Obviously, I just got out of bed at whatever time of the, the night it was. So I didn't see the beginning or the end. I just literally saw it at the, the full eclipse phase. And it was just, it was incredible. And because it was my first one, I didn't really know what to expect. And I was like, wow, amazing. One of the good things about uh, lunar eclipses is the eclipses aren't all that rare. With a solar eclipse, it's just that you can only see it from certain parts of the globe. Whereas with a lunar eclipse, it's pretty much, are you on the nighttime side? Then you can see it, which makes it so much more accessible and easy to see. And you don't need to have special glasses or anything like that. No, that's it. Yeah, very true. Yeah, you don't need to be careful, do you? It's just look up. So um, the penumbral eclipse starts. So this is when the moon enters the Earth's penumbral shadow. Um, this is just before midnight at 11.57 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 13th of March. And then the partial eclipse, so when the moon enters the Earth's umbral shadow, starts at 1.09 a.m. on the 14th of March. And totality begins at 2.26 a.m., which will last for around an hour. And the point at which the moon appears to be blood red is as he just mentioned. So, yes, not only is it a full moon, a worm moon, it's also a blood moon. And the eclipse, so four things going on on the 14th. It's going to be fantastic and there is a lovely guide in the Sky at Night magazine, the March issue for people who want to read up on that. But as we mentioned at the beginning, you know, we're not going to see the full eclipse from the UK. But if you do get yourself somewhere with a clear western horizon, you can watch the partial phase beginning at 5.10 a.m. when the moon will be 12 degrees above the western horizon. And totality starts at 6.26 a.m just as the moon sets and yeah i should should make it clear that's gmt times there so yes unfortunately you know what's that so just over and say an hour and 20 minutes mm. we'll be able to see some of this partial eclipse but yeah it's a real a really annoying that it's, the moon is setting just as totality starts it does it is always annoying when stuff like that happens but hopefully you might just be able to catch a bit of the redness beginning to, to emerge yeah, it would be lovely, wouldn't it? Yes. Again, well, I'll probably be up at that time in the morning, actually, anyway. So if it's clear, I'll, I'll try and have a look. And yeah, as, as I mentioned, you know, great guide to the lunar eclipse on the Sky at Night website and in the March issue. And if you'd like to read more about the start and end times, four time zones in North America and Europe, it, it's in those guides. I will say this again. If you are in the Americas, anywhere, like Canada, the USA, South America, any of those then pretty much the entire night, you'll be able to see the entire totality. It's going to be a really great show for you guys. Not that we're jealous or anything. <laughs> but that will definitely be one worth either getting up for or staying up for if you are in that part of the world. Total lunar eclipse party, woo. <laughs> I'm sure there will be lots. <laughs> yes. And as usual, we'd love to see some photographs, wouldn't we, as Eve? People Absolutely. I always put a link down to our website where you can send in your images. We print the best ones in the magazine every month. We would absolutely love to have some wonderful lunar eclipse photos. Rub our noses in it. <laughs> Please <laughs> yeah. do. So we do actually have another total lunar eclipse in September, but unfortunately we won't see that in totality either as totality will have happened before the moon has risen in the morning. So it's kind of like the opposite end of the the scale so yeah. we're missing it out we'll get one eventually like keep an eye on this space they, they do happen relatively regularly eventually we will get a full total lunar eclipse that you can see from the uk yes. and it'll be lovely and clear and we'll all enjoy it here in the uk because we deserve one <laughs> 
So on the 16th of March, the 92% lit waning gibbous moon and speaker, the brightest star in Virgo, they're going to appear close together in the night sky into the morning. And in some parts of the world, such as Africa and Western Australia, observers will see a lovely lunar occultation of speaker. We're moving on to the solar system now. So on the 11th of March, Venus is now an extremely thin crescent at just 5% lit, and next week it will be at inferior solar conjunction. At 9.25pm on the 11th, Ganymede, the largest of Jupiter's moons, is going to transit the planet, and this transit will end just before midnight at 11.58pm. So, you know, we've, we've mentioned that Saturn isn't visible at the moment due to its close proximity to the Sun, and on the 12th of March, the planet is at solar conjunction, which is somewhat disappointing, as he because there's a major event happening next week with Saturn. Yeah. And guess what? We won't be able to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll cover all that even more next week. Yes, there is definitely a theme. Also on the 12th, we have Mercury and Venus appearing close together in the evening sky, becoming visible around 6.25 p.m. and setting after 8 p.m. And on, also on the 12th, well-placed in the constellation of Leo, asteroid 8 Flora reaches opposition, which means it is opposite the sun in the sky, and it also makes its closest approach to Earth. But despite all of these factors suggesting it's going to be like really easy to observe, it's going to be a magnitude plus 9.7, so binoculars or a moderately sized telescope will be needed, and you know, asteroid very very far away it's it's tiny anyway so yeah it's kind of when you think about it a lot of these asteroids i don't know how big this one is but a lot of these asteroids are maybe a couple of hundred kilometers across which it, yeah, it sounds well, big when you're like comparing them to a bus but <laughs> when you're comparing them to a planet that's tiny and they're millions of miles away yeah. and you can still see them i think that's still incredible this one is just under 148 kilometers in diameter mm. That's not very big at all. No, but you're right. Yeah, considering it's so far away and, you know, relatively small, I guess, to still be able to see it's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you fancy giving it a go, it's going to be above the horizon for most of the night, reaching its highest altitude of 50 degrees above the southern horizon at midnight. And you're probably going to need to look at online resources to to locate the, the asteroid to give you a bit of help there. So the asteroid Flora takes just over three years to orbit the sun. And this asteroid was discovered in 1847. And the name Ezzy, Flora, was proposed by John Herschel. And this is well-timed. It comes from the Latin meaning goddess of flowers and gardens and mother of spring. So the presence of Flora in the sky, it's, it's really apt, given that it is spring equinox. Oh, that is well-timed, yes. Yeah, so lovely... Lovely link there just to close off this episode of the of the Star Diary. A lot of asteroids are, are named after goddesses because the gods got all of the main planets apart from Venus. And I think a lot of people were like, it's time to give some of the female goddesses out there a crack of the whip, which is why so many of the asteroids are named after goddesses. Yeah, love and so many lovely names. Mm -hmm. So... We'll be talking about the spring equinox next week. So we'll leave today with Flora. Mm -hmm. A lovely place to leave it, I believe. So again, lots of things to be seeing this week in this week's Night Sky. Even more if you are over in the US and you will get to see the eclipse in its totality. But if you want to get even more highlights about what you can see in the night sky in the weeks coming up, please do subscribe to the podcast and we'll be back next week with even more stargazing highlights. In the meantime, to summarise this week again, we start the week on the 11th of March where Venus is just 5% lit and Ganymede will be transiting the planet Jupiter. On the 12th, Saturn isn't visible, but it will be at solar conjunction today. Venus and Mercury get closer together in the evening sky, whilst asteroid 8 Flora is at opposition in the constellation of Leo. On the 14th, there is a total lunar eclipse. It's only a partial in the UK, but it will be total in the Americas if you're in that part of the world. And the full moon today is called the Worm Moon. 
And finally, on the 16th, a 92% lit waxing gibbous moon and spiker will be close together in the night sky. Lots of things to see this week, and we'll be back with even more highlights next week. So from all of us here at Star Diary, goodbye. If you want to find out even more spectacular sights that will be gracing the night sky this month, be sure to pick up a copy of BBC Sky at Night magazine, where we have a 16-page pull-out sky guide with a full overview of everything worth looking up for throughout the whole month. Whether you like to look at the moon, the planets or the deep sky, whether you use binoculars, telescopes or neither, our sky guide has got you covered with detailed star charts to help you track your way across the night sky. From all of us here at BBC Sky at Night magazine, goodbye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Star Diary podcast from the makers of BBC Sky at Night magazine. For more of our podcasts, visit our website at skyatnightmagazine.com slash podcasts or head to Spotify, iTunes or your favourite podcast player. 